I'm Abby, I'm Top Knot Stitcher, I am back from StitchCon, and this is our StitchCon summer update, catch up, all the things, I'm pumped. I know that many of you have already caught a lot of StitchCon recaps and have gotten to see a lot of great StitchCon footage and pictures and swag and freebie finds and keepsakes haul and just all the things. So um, thank you in advance for being here and being excited for another StitchCon recap. If you're not into StitchCon, that's cool. I'll have other stuff sprinkled in throughout um, as the new normal around here. I don't really have like an outline. It's not new normal. It's kind of always been this way. I don't have an outline to go off of. I have piles of stuff around me that I will be sharing. There's stuff up here that I will forget to share. Um, I'm trying to talk a little bit slower because my mother complains that I talk too fast in my videos. And I'm sure she's maybe not the only one who thinks that and finds it harder to follow when I'm talking a million miles a minute. Uh, let's see. A special hello and welcome and thanks for being here to my aunts and uncles and cousins who all found out about this channel and my little cross stitch corner of the world. Um, thanks for thanks for being here. Thanks for your enthusiastic support. I appreciate it. I started this channel like two years ago and at the time I told my mom about it and I told my sister about it and Birdie obviously um, and a couple other like really close friends. Not that I don't, if you're a close friend and I didn't tell you about this, I don't, it's not because I don't love you. Um, but I just, you know, these videos are for a very niche group of people and I didn't want to share it before I was ready. And then I was ready, but I was just, just kind of like busy and forgetful kind of things are in desperate need of a trim. There we go. Anyway. Thanks for checking this out. If you're not a stitcher but you're watching this, um, I will not at all be offended if you don't want to watch the whole thing. I will ask though that you like and subscribe so that you can catch updates because usually the first like five or ten minutes I just give a little chit chat, some life updates, some fun adventures. Um, at the end sometimes I talk about books. The middle is usually just stitching but sometimes there's other stuff too. So. Uh, if you are a stitcher, please also like and subscribe because that helps me know that you all care and that helps motivate me to keep making videos. So I appreciate those of you who take the time to do that and those of you who take the time to comment, thank you so very much. I love getting to chat with you all in the comments. Um, any other housekeeping that we need to do? No, I think we just get into StitchCon. It was amazing. Um, I'm going to repeat myself a lot and I'm going to repeat what everyone else has already said, but StitchCon was just unbel unbelievably fantastic. Um, it was now my like third big retreat like that. And I can definitely tell like with every retreat, I feel more and more in my element and I feel more and more comfortable being like my authentic self in person with people, in person with people. Uh, but just like not feeling like I need to, I don't know. Stitchers are just the best and you all are so welcoming and lovely. And so it is really a place to just shine as yourself. And I am so grateful I got to do that at StitchCon this year. Um, I don't even know where to start. I'm going to show you all the things. Um, I'm not going to shout out every single person that I met and talked to and loved on because I just can't. But if I met you and I didn't, don't, I'm not going to mention you here. I promise I do truly love you. Um, it's just inevitable. Someone's going to get left out. So, uh, where do we start? Uh, I'm trying to think what makes the most sense. Oh, we can start. Let's start before StitchCon even started. Um, I was lucky enough to nab Mitch Stitch, Michelle, Mitchie, as my roommate this year. And um, we met at StitchCon last year and 
I just, I just fell in love with her. She's so fantastic. If you're not watching her, please stop what you're doing and go check her out because she's wonderful. She also just got a new dog and he's super cute and she doesn't show him enough in her, well, I think she's only made like one or two videos since she got him, but it doesn't matter. She's hilarious and she is just like one of those people I want to grow up to be, you know? Um, and I like, we, we've been like into sisters and I will take it. Anyway, I got to room with her this year, but she ended up flying through San Francisco before StitchCon, um, cause she had a work thing nearby, well in San Francisco. And so I got to see her the week, the weekend before StitchCon, which was amazing. So we were all going to fly into Cincinnati on Wednesday, but she flew here on Sunday and I was like, hold the phones, let me drop everything. And I had her over to my house and she got to meet Jam and we went for a walk and we stopped and got dinner and it was just the loveliest, most wonderful treat ever and made me so excited for StitchCon. I was already excited, but I got even more excited. Okay, these things. Okay, I'm going to try to not overly mess with that. Anyway, I got to just hang out with her and she got to meet Birdie and I took her to my favorite uh, pizza brewery place and it was just magical and delightful and she brought me the cutest little gift from Australia. So she sent me, not sent me, she brought me the most adorable tea towel. Look at that echidna! Look at his flowers. Look at his little tongue. Is that not the cutest thing ever? I love it so much. I don't want to use it as a towel because it's going to get gross. I want to just hang it up on the wall. But it's okay if it does get gross because I also have the cute little kitten on a mug. Oh, he's so cute. And he's got a little, little flowers back there. And I think I already tossed the um, card in the recycling, but I think, I mean, it's like an Australian artist, obviously, but I feel like there was something where like they donate something to the animal, something. I also could be making that up. Who knows? So thank you, Michelle. It's adorable. I've been having a lot of fun drinking my tea out of it. I should have made tea for this video. Oh, well. Um, she also brought me the greatest Australian candy in the world, the Violet Crumble. I got to taste this um, in Arizona. She brought these. It's like the crunchy, but it's better. She brought me two of these. I ate one for breakfast and it was amazing. I think I only ate half of it, but I might have eaten the whole thing. Um, and then I very very wisely, but it was very difficult. I saved this one for post stitch con for when I'm feeling all sad because it's going to be a whole year till I see all those people again, most of them. And then I'll, I'll eat my crunchy and suck it up. So I'm going to try to save this for next weekend. Um, we'll see. Oh, it's gluten free. That's nice. Uh, these things are amazing. It's got like a like a honeycomb thing inside and it's covered in chocolate and it just ooh, is delicious. It's like really good that those are not <clears throat> available in the U.S. And if they are available somewhere, please don't tell me because I would just eat them nonstop and I don't have enough self-control to live that kind of life. <sighs> oh, there he is. So. That was exciting. It was also perfect because then I got to give her her roommate gift. Um, and just like squeal with excitement together. And it was it was a lot of fun. And then had to go to work for a couple days. And then I flew to Cincinnati. And I, once again, uh, got to fly on the same flight as Jen, Delicious Breads. Uh, we flew together to Arizona and then um, worked out to fly together again to StitchCon. And it's so much fun because uh, you have someone to hang out with and talk stitching with. And you don't get as many weird looks on the plane. Maybe you do. I don't know. You don't care. You don't notice as much um, weird looks on the plane because you're sitting there stitching. Because it's like 
you're both sitting there stitching. It must be a thing. Um, so we had a lot of fun at, you know, six in the morning <laughs> on our flight and we watched Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire for our magical stitches homework and we talked stitching and we ended up the second leg of our trip. We were on the same flight as a bunch of other StitchCon bound folks. So that was fun. And got to the airport and Arlene had just landed. So she greeted us and then we ran over to McKenna's gate and she landed and then we all went together to get our rental car and it was just so much fun. The whole, like I knew StitchCon would be fun this year because I know so many of the people who were going. But I was nervous that it would be so much larger than last year. And I was just, I don't know, I, I was nervous that it would just be too crazy, too much. Uh, wouldn't be able to like get around to talk to people. That there'd be like almost all the people I would miss seeing. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It just, I, I was excited, but also skeptical. And I was so wrong because it was wonderful. The room that we were in was perfectly sized. So there was plenty of space to move around. It was not like last year, it was a little, it, we were a little compact. Um, and it just made it hard to like move around, move between tables. Um, to, yeah, it was, this year was wonderful. Um, last year was wonderful too. But um, we set up camp at a table kind of in the center of the room which was perfect so it was easy to like see what was going on and bounce around and talk to people I think in general people were a lot more comfortable moving around and talking and meeting new people this year and I know for me I already knew a lot of people because I've met them at previous retreats but I I just think in general like the vibe was a lot more relaxed and friend not Friendly is the wrong word because it wasn't like previous retreats are, have been unfriendly, but it was just a really incredible energy and people were so, so nice. And um, I thank you for to all the people who came up to say hi to me and um, like made a point to seek me out. I really appreciate it because there were a couple times where I would like run into somebody and be like, ah, hi. But then I was, you know, on the way to the bathroom or to get lunch or whatever it might be and I couldn't really chat with them and I was like that's fine because I'll find them later never found them again never saw them again so that was the the trade-off of the, the 400 is that if you found somebody you you needed to like have that moment with them because you might <laughs> you might not see them again um but there were plenty I mean I had so many wonderful interactions um and I'm just I'm just so grateful thank you all for traveling to Cincinnati um, and being part of what made it so wonderful. Um, just like last year we had the passport and so it was a lot of fun to get to sign people's passports and meet people that way. I think it's such a perfect icebreaker because it, it gives you um, a way to just jump in, feel okay interrupting to say, hi, can you sign this? I'm so-and-so. Um, a lot of people made business cards or calling cards that had their handles on it because it was hard to keep track of who is who because you have the, their real life name and their Instagram name and sometimes their channel name is different and it's just blah. It's a lot. So it was great to also get cards from people, including from me, from a Top Knot Stitcher Shop card. Um, so I handed those out. I also just started like tossing them on tables uh, because I would swing by a table and say hi to whoever was sitting there, but there'd be a lot of people who were up and about. Um, there were so many people. It was wonderful. I'm going to stop rambling now and let me show you some things that happened. Um, oh, well, let me, so Wednesday we got to the hotel, we ate at Cracker Barrel, classic. Um, you know, we just kind of accumulated stitchers throughout the weekend and would go out to, with in various combinations. Um, the stitching room opened at noon on Thursday. We were like pretty early in line cause we were pretty pumped to get in there. Um, went to, I didn't go to keepsakes until Saturday, I think. I'm pretty sure. Um, went to a thrift store at one point. Did lots of things. So 
the general arc of the weekend will um, reveal itself. But honestly, all the days kind of run together, so we're going to be scattered from here on out. But let's start off by sharing a little bit of <clears throat> StitchCon 2019. I have here the bag. This bag is wonderful. Um, major kudos to whoever chose this design um, because I really, really love it. And um, last year we had a, got a really cute bag, but it was so small. And uh, StitchCon, go big or go home. Uh, so this bag was perfect. And we're just going to see what's inside. Uh, this has a lot of the things I received as gifts or exchanges, the freebie table, the trunk show, and keepsakes, and probably a lot of other random things. So we're just going to go through it and see what happens. And then I have here a stack of what I worked on at StitchCon. I have over on this side of me some like non-StitchCon new purchases and stitching updates. And I think that's mostly it. Maybe some shop updates later, but everything's kind of up everywhere right now, so who knows? Um, let's start off with something super exciting. I participated in the Smalls Exchange this year. I didn't last year because I kind of lost track of time and then I forgot to FFO and then I didn't want to have like a rush job and I did it this year. I stitched a little cardinal that I got at Keepsakes last StitchCon. It was adorable. I finished it on a little easel. He was so cute. And I uh, was able to find the woman who got my small later that day or the next day. Um, I ran out to lunch like right after the exchange, so I missed the opportunity to like find her then. But luckily she wasn't there either, so she wasn't looking for me. Um, <clears throat> but then luckily I ran to her and, and someone at her table was like, oh, uh, Nikki, Nikki, got your small. And so I got to meet her and take a picture and it was so fun. Um, oh no, I'm sorry. Nikki made, no, Nikki got mine. I also went around the room trying to find who had made my small, uh, which is Beth. And I have the card somewhere. Um, and... I sat down at our table and and I think it was Tony I was like, oh, Beth made your small because <laughs> um, I left it on the table after I while I went out to lunch. So there's the rambly explanation. Um, I picked up this. I don't know if I have the bag still. Oh, I do. I picked up this uh, small in particular. So I'm always curious what makes people pick up the one that they do. Um, <clears throat> Because you know me, I really like reusable, sustainable things. And so my small I packed up in a little zipper pouch project bag because uh, I like functional gift wrap. Um, but I picked up this one because it looks like it had, this has been used a couple times before. And I mean that in the best way. I don't mean that in like, ew, this was crumpled and gross. Um, but it looks like, oh, this has been reused and I appreciate that. But it's also just really cute and it's black and white. So... You know, I'm all into that. Um, and it was a great choice because inside there was a, not a bunch. Well, there was a bunch. I don't know. There were a few locally made chocolates and they were so good. Um, they were from her hometown in Ohio, which I keep forgetting the name of because I already ate all of it, obviously. Um, There's a little thing of Buckeyes. There was a little thing of just little delicious chocolates. There were these fantastic chocolate covered pretzels. I really enjoyed it. I shared one Buckeye with my mother and I ate the rest of that chocolate myself and I feel great about it. And we got this cool little, oh, isn't that cute? I love flamingos and it says StitchCon 2019. And it's this cool little tray thing which I am pumped about because I've always thought, why would you ever want stitching as a coaster? Because you're just going to get all gross. This could be used as a coaster, but I'm going to use it for like scissors and things. But it's so cute. So thank you so much. I love it so much. Somewhere someone took a video of me opening it and squealing with delight. So that exists in the world. Pretty sure it was Stephanie. Um...
so that was very fun. And I'm excited to... I also, at that same table, I met the woman who got the small that I made in Arizona, but never got a chance to actually find and meet. So that was, that was fun. Um, it made me really excited to stitch a small something for the Floss Tube New Jersey retreat in a few weeks. So that's crazy. It's so soon. Um, but I need to decide what I'm going to do for that. Okay. I'm just now realizing that we're already 20 minutes in and I'm hungry. So we're going to book it. Um, on the freebie table, I scored several wonderful things, both that I found and that other people like found and brought up to me and it was very sweet of them, including this cross stitchable gold plated headband. So I found this and was with a couple other stitchers and was like, ah, and they were clearly like a little bit jealous, but overall excited and supportive. Um, cause you know, I do, I do wear a lot of the headband. But then I found two more, so we all three, we each got one, and I need to figure out what to put on there. It's like eight stitches tall. It's surprisingly comfortable, and it is 24 karat gold plated, so it's fancy. So thank you to whoever brought those. Amazing. Um, in this bag, I have a lot of the needle minders that I received in the swap. Um, I'm not going to show all of them, sorry, because there's just, there's a lot of them, but I wanted to share, ah, I wanted to share one in particular that just made me insanely happy. This is a cat on a speedboat in sunglasses. I forget who gave this to me, but you're my favorite person at StitchCon because like, can you even? It's so cute. So thank you so much. What else? I want to share. Oh, oh, when I walked in, um, little one and Lynette, home study on the home front, were sitting at uh, a table right by the front door. And so when I came back in from lunch, they had arrived and they ran up to say hi. And little one gave me the prettiest scissor fob that they made. Thank you so much. It was so delightful to finally get to meet them in real life and just meet everyone in general who I hadn't met at previous retreats. It's just like, they're all so good and they're like they are in their videos. And you think like, can you possibly be like better than in your video? Yes. Yes. Obviously. Yes. They're, they're all just mm. wonderful. Um, let's see. I also got this fabulous Lisa Frank. Yeah. That's pretty great. Again, I don't remember who this one's from, but thank you because you made my life. Um, there are so many. Um, this year, I made a new cat needle minder. So if you went to StitchCon last year, you might have seen the cat of the year. This was a new year, new cats. I don't have any left, but I will try to find one to show you. Maybe, no, these are all just, I don't even know. But on the freebie table, I also found this little bag of teeny tiny tart tins. And so I grabbed one for me and uh, one for Ryan, who's sitting at my table because, is it? Yeah. Because Ryan, uh, Wild Violet Cross Stitch, made a little floss tube and chill pattern and finished it in a like regular size tart. But I found this little teeny tiny tart. So I gotta figure out what I can stitch to put into that. Um, I don't really understand the tarts, but I feel like I can get on board with this tiny one pretty easily. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I did get a cold the last couple days of StitchCon and I'm still fighting it off even though it's been almost a week. Um, Oh, I also, throughout the weekend, I gathered some things that I'm going to be putting together into a little giveaway. I think I'm going to save it. Well, should we do it in this one? Yeah, let's do it in this one. Um, I've gathered together some things that will be in a little giveaway. Um, if you would like to enter this giveaway, I would like 
I don't even know. What are we going to do? Don't say giveaway. You need to be over 18 or have your parents' permission. I'll ship anywhere in the world. We're going to keep it a secret right in the middle of this video. So who even, good job if you find this little snippet. Um, but I have a little collection of items from StitchCon that I gathered extras of or um, just love and want to share. Um, so, and I'll share a few of them in this video and a lot of them will probably be a surprise. One of them is that I grabbed, um, there was an extra scissor bob make and take kit left on our table. Oh. And so I took it home with me. I, you can't really see, but that's the stitchy bus and the little tassel. So that's one of the items. Um, I'll find one of the needle minders that I made because I know I have a couple somewhere in my house. Um, and there'll be some other little goodies. So if you want to enter this sporadically introduced giveaway, um, please, if you went to StitchCon, please comment below with one of your favorite moments of the weekend. And if you did not go to StitchCon, tell me something wonderful that has happened to you this summer because StitchCon is the highlight of my summer, but what is the highlight of your summer? Let me know. Uh, so if you if you answer either or both of those prompts, I will know that you're interested in whatever ends up being in this giveaway. Um, oh, for example, this is one of the items. Um, the very last night we ran into this lovely stitcher who I cannot remember the name of, but her mother, Susan or Linda. I'm not a very I'm not very good at this. There's so many people and so many names. And I'm sorry getting mixed up because I've been watching so many StitchCon recaps that there's even more names. Um, so I will find the picture of us and then confirm the names. But um, this lovely stitcher who started making beautiful project bags just because they're super fun to make and gave them away. And they're beautifully done, beautiful fabrics, nice top quality fabric. And so I picked out... Um, one for myself, and then I picked out one for you all, because um, I, I asked if that was okay, and she said, yes, of course. So this one I picked out for myself, because like, look at that! The little animals in the forest, and the fairies riding the rabbit, and there's a snail, and there's a unicorn, and a badger with a scarf, <gasps> and then, wait for it, okay, first of all, it's got a little zipper pull with little owls. It's got the little animals burrowing. It's so cute. Um, so I picked that one out for myself and made everyone really jealous. So thank you so much. Susan. Linda. I think it's one of those and I'm sorry I cannot remember. You do beautiful work. I gave you my business card. Please get in touch because I would love to make these accessible to the world. If you're interested in partnering with my Etsy shop. Um... I would love to be in business with you. Um, and then I also picked out one to give away. Look at that. So I originally picked this up um, with a certain recipient in mind, but then I realized there's cupcakes all over it and there's muffins all over it. And she's not particularly a fan of those things. So if you happen to be watching this and you think it's you and you are upset at my rejection of you, for this bag. Does that make sense? Uh, you can comment below and try to win. But it's super cute. It's got, it also has a little owl. It's adorable. Um, so this will be one of the giveaway items. And there's another, I have to, we'll see. Um, <clears throat> What else are we going to include? Who knows? Okay, it's 29 minutes. We've barely shown anything. We're going to make this a StitchCon only video, and I'm going to make another video later today where I'm going to share other Stitchy update stuff. Decision made. Oh, let's talk for a second about this sweatshirt. I went to the thrift store and I ended up getting the most fabulous sequin dress that McKenna found and tragically didn't fit her but it fit me like a glove. 
and snap that up for fancy Friday stitching night. And then I also got this fantastic bear skin is what I've started calling it. It's this like furry, ridiculous, long vest with a hood. It has pockets. It's the comfiest thing in the world. It's like a snuggy except furry and it looks like it would be super uncomfortable and awful and scratchy and gross. It wasn't. It was so soft and lush and it kept me warm and it was a lot of fun to wear because it looks ridiculous and the stitching room gets cold. That thing saved my life. Um, so I got both of those at the thrift store. I also picked up this Ohio Buckeye zip up for a dollar. Ohio just coming out of nowhere with the thrift store wins. Um, so I was super excited and I picked this up because I'm always cold and I don't really wear a lot of zip up hoodies, um, which is why I did not buy any stitch con apparel this year. Cause I have a t-shirt from last year and I just thought, you know, I'd rather spend that money on stitching stuff and not an item of clothing that I won't wear very often. But then I found this for a dollar and I thought, well, okay, if it's kind of like this, it looks kind of like the stitch con hoodie because it's red and white and that's the classic stitch con colors. So I like that it kind of blended in as, um, not swag, but you know, the branded apparel or whatever. It's also just very comfy and I love, I love it. <clears throat> so that was an exciting thrift find. Um, in this little bag, I snagged a few little kits off the freebie table that I'm super excited about. Um, I found two kits from series that I stitched on as a young little Abby and found like other things from that those same series and I like lost my mind I was so excited and I was showing everybody um so I'm I don't think I've shown this in a video yet but I have it somewhere waiting to be framed um I've stitched several of this little series stitch and frame um let's see I don't know these little tiny old school kits this is bread and it's a little sack of flour I have one that's like flour salt, pepper, sugar, and coffee. Um, and I have them all. They're not finished. I lost all the other frames because I, I think I, they were all, it was also showing you could like <clears throat> stitch it as just like a little pillow, like a little, a little burlap sack of whatever. Um, so I think I was planning to do it that way. So I don't have the frames for the other ones, but look how cute. Now I can stitch bread and add it to my collection. These are some of the first projects I ever stitched on in addition to this little flower sachet series and guess what I ran into oh little forget-me-nots so I have one that has daffodils there was one that was yellow and one that was pink and I don't remember my mom has one of them um working as a sachet at this very moment I should have um, but I was super pumped to find that. So thank you to whoever brought these. If you happen to ever come across them in the wild in the future, the little flowers or the little, these little framey things, please let me know because I love them. Um, I also, there are a bunch of Mill Hill kits that someone brought. I actually don't know if this one has, this feels like it's just the pattern. Um, I might need to get the beads for it, but I got this little cat, obviously. And I got this cute little spring bouquet. There's a little honeycomb. Bumblebee in. Are you kidding? It's not honeycomb. Hive. Whatever. Oh, so cute. And I also grabbed this little kit because jam. So I'm going to change that to orange jam. And I'm not going to stitch very sweet. I'm going to stitch like jam is my jam or something ridiculous. It's going to be so great. Um, so, got those. Let's see. Okay. These are all the freebies I picked up. 
Some of these were in our welcome packet, so I'm not going to show you all of them. Some of them I picked up um, while walking around keepsakes because I have a bunch of free charts floating around. Uh oh, stuffed it. Um, and then some of these are just from the freebie, excuse me, the freebie table. Um, Lindy Stitches, Stephanie Webb, I got to sit with her and I got to squeal over a lot of things that she was stitching on and she designed this cute little scissor fob. Wait for the name. Are you ready? Turtly lovable. I, I'm, I died. It's so cute. So I'm very excited to stitch that up. Um, I also got from uh, the okra of StitchCon, Jen, and you get a card. A DMC color card. These are free at Michael's. They stopped at Michael's and she picked up a few to hand out. Guess what? One of them's going in the giveaway. Um, so grab that. I got this chart from the freebie table and I just think it's the cutest, cutest thing ever. It's called 10 Carrot Tree Farm. And it's a bunny and it's a carrot tree. What? It's so cute. I need that. Um, like, yes. All the yeses. Got the stitch coin pattern. Um, oh, I got these cute little Russian dolls. Adorable. Someone actually brought that up to me. I don't remember. Um, hold on. Hold on. Let's see what's happening. Oh, I got this one as design inspiration because. Um, Okay, this is just the sketch, but there's a cross stitch of it, but I'm not going to show you the pattern because whatever. Um, it's these little Japanese dolls, and her top knot is, like, particularly great. So I have designing goals involving a top knot, and so I got this for inspiration. I got this fantastic vacationing cat. Oh, so cute. If you're enjoying all these faces that I'm making for you. I don't want to rip this envelope, but I stuffed so many papers in here. Okay. That's a freebie. Some of these little free charts I picked up at Keepsakes. Oh, like this one. I picked up two of this little crab pillow. That's going in the giveaway. Um... And honestly, as I go through this to put it away, I'm going to pull out more of this to give away because, like, I don't need it all. Did I get two of that one? Yep. Okay. Uh, ba, 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 ba. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, let's see. Several of these were in our little welcome packet. So I'm not going to show you. I picked this one up because I just, it just spoke to me on a deep spiritual level and I found it horrifying and amazing. And I got it to like pull a prank on somebody. I don't remember who. And then I kept it for myself. Seven Swans. Black Swan Designs. Karen Weaver. I don't know what's going on, but it's super creepy. There are indeed seven swans. One of them is white. The rest are black. The little swan duckling is great. The snowman's pretty creepy. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, oh. oh, there were a few people who put their like free, the freebie charts that we got in our welcome packet. They sat on the freebie table, so I grabbed extras of those for this little giveaway as well. But I'm not going to show them to you. It will just get to be a surprise. Um, and then I had I had a chart from the freebie table that I was particularly stoked to show you all, and I don't know what I did with it. Well, this isn't it, but I have, I grabbed this one. I was going to give it to somebody, and then I forgot who. 
So I'm going to give it away because I grabbed it because I was so excited because diversity in cross-stitch is hard to come by. So, sorry, my computer keeps going to sleep. So grab that one. I also grabbed this one and I'm going to hold on to it for a while, but I don't know if I'll ever stitch it, but I just found it really cute. It's the Nutcracker Factory. And not just that, it's the Nutcracker Factory too. And I just thought it was adorable. Um, I wish it looked a little bit more factory-like. Mr. Kraken Nut Factory. That's what it says on the bottom. But I just loved it. Um, man. Throughout the weekend, all my stuff got, you know, mixed into a million different bags and things, so I'm sure that the chart I'm thinking of will turn up somewhere, and I'll show you eventually, but no idea where it is right now. I got my keepsakes bag! So, I was, I went to StitchCon without, like, there was nothing I wanted to kit up in particular. I didn't have necessarily a budget in mind, but it wasn't, like, a free-for-all. It was just, like, Think about your purchases, and then if you want to purchase it, maybe maybe go ahead and do that. <laughs> um, so I didn't have like strict parameters, but I also didn't really. I figured I would most likely buy fabric and floss from the trunk show because color and cotton and under the sea fabrics, I'm all here for it. Um, and then I think that's pretty much all I did buy. But let me show you. So. Before I got to StitchCon, Mitchie had arrived, and she went to Keepsakes. And last year, Michelle and I both stitched Zippity Doodah, which we saw at Keepsakes on the wall and were like, yes. So we both bought it and ended up stitching, got the same fabric for it, and started it together. And so she went to Keepsakes, and when I ran into her at the hotel later, she ran up to me with this Polly Wally Doodle. And I'm from Kentucky, so bluegrass music is, like, a thing, and, like, folk songs and all of that. And so um, I was joking around with her. Uh, there was some live music playing when we went out to dinner uh, before StitchCon. And I told her, I was like, oh, I love, like, live bluegrass music so much. It's the music of my people. And she thought it was hilarious. Or I'm projecting that on her because I think it's hilarious. Um, so when she handed this to me, she was like, the music of your people! Uh, and it's so cute! And so at the trunk show, we found the perfect fabric for it. So this is under the sea fabric. 32 count opal tarnished silver Lugana. And it is amazing. And the one we used last year was crystal helix, so it was also sparkly and gray, so they're going to look so good together. Um, and then we also, when we went to Keepsakes, Saturday, I think that's what I said, um, we got the silks, the called for colors, and I got my little keepsakes thread keep, how cute, and this is from McKenna, she's got these in her uh, store, 1884, oh, it's so pretty, so I'm very excited about that, and so this is all ready to start. So, I mean, altogether, that was, like, totally reasonable. We picked out, well, she picked out the chart for us. Um, and we picked out the fabric and floss together. We changed a couple of the colors, um, if you're curious, because the called for, hold on, let me show you against the fabric so you can actually see it. The called for greens in the pattern were, like, very yellowy and, like, not not my favorite and especially on this fabric it just looked kind of funky so we picked out these two greens instead which are also NPI NPS I always forget needlepoint ink NPS silk and whatever um, ah and then we also it called for a black silk which they were sold out of every single brand of black silk um, but we opted for this really pretty dark blue instead and then this purple we subbed out um, this is leftover from the emblem of friendship piece we've been working on and there's a lot of leftover purple silk thread Michelle did you keep some of your purple silk 
from your project? Because I have your and Wilma friendship, and it's got a whole lot of silk with it, so let me know. Anyway, super excited for that. Um, later at the trunk show, I was browsing around, and I went back to Under the Sea Fabrics, and I thought to myself, you know, I would buy some 46 or some 55 linen if there's one here that I like. And sure enough, this is Beach Walk, and it's not showing up. Well, it's kind of close. It's like a really nice blush, and it's got some nice modeling on it. And I have a sampler, the Sun and Moon sampler. It's somewhere back here. It needs to be kitted up, but uh, it's going to happen on this, and I'm super, super excited. Um... And there were a lot of things in the trunk show that I picked up, but then put back down. And I exhibited some restraint, um, but I do have a longer wish list of patterns now. Thanks to Barbara. Twinkle, twinkle, twinkle. But that was the bulk of my StitchCon shopping. Um, there was not. There were there were a few other things, but I think they're mixed in like a project bag elsewhere. So. We'll have to find it eventually. Um, let's see. That was my haul. Anything else? I guess not. I have other things that are lost. I'll find them eventually. Or they're things that you've seen a million times, so I'm not showing it. Um, and that's all I know. I'm sure I'll find everything as soon as I start actually unpacking this to put it away. Whoa. Oh, fun story time. We were boarding the plane in Oakland, and there was a woman on our flight who had this little rolly suitcase. Had this little rolly suitcase. And I've always kind of wanted one of those little under-the-seat bags. Um that a lot of people, especially a lot of stitchers, seem to use because uh, it's just a very, very smart way of packing. Um, and then it's a really handy retreat bag if you need to be able to move it around. And hers had cats on it and yarn and other, like, sewing things. Nope, I guess it's just yarn. But it was really cute. It had cats. So I Googled it, and I found it on Amazon, and I thought, mm, I don't need that. Then she ended up being on her flight, uh, a connecting flight, and I cannot remember your name, and I'm so sorry, but... I commented and was like, I really love your bag. So we found out we're all stitchers, right? And I was like, I really love your bag. It's already like in my Amazon cart. And she goes, oh, did you know there's a Groupon for it? So I found it on Groupon and it was like half the price. And so I bought it immediately. I had it shipped <clears throat> to my house in California. And so I just got it yesterday when I got home and I love it so much. I have not yet decided if I'm keeping it. I obviously can make a case for keeping it, but I also like... I kind of prefer having my backpack when I travel, and I don't really need this and a backpack, so we'll see. But look at those cats! It's so ridiculous. I love it. Um, this is the Lily Bloom designer. Um, there are a bunch of really cute like owls and cactus and flowers and all kinds of stuff, but it's so cute. And my suitcase, my regular, like, weekender suitcase, is kind of this color, so they look really good together. And so that's what's really tripping me up, because I kind of do want to keep it just because of that, <laughs> the coordination. Um, it's got pockets for days. Look at that. It would be so handy. Jam got to go for a little ride around the apartment in it. It fits him perfectly. Um, I wouldn't use it as a pet carrier, but he had a blast. Um, it's got the main compartment. That's my new signature sound effect. Um, so it's got these little zippered things here. It's got a zippered pocket here. This unzips on the side for like, if you want more access to that. I love it. It's got two zippered, a zippered pouch on either side. It holds a ton. Um, I totally get why people love these so much. If I went to more, like, crafty retreats, 
I mean, if I went to more, I'm going to four this year. That's right, four. We're already on to two of them. Um, if I went to more, like, local stitchy meetup things, then maybe this would make more sense. I just can't decide if I can justify it, but it is fantastic, and it was super cheap. So I'm trying to decide what I want to do, um, but I do love it. And, you know, I'm really expanding my top knot stitcher business, and this could be a, a business investment. Because it's nothing says stitcher like a bag of cat's with yarn. So, um, that was the only, like, truly impulsive thing I did over, over StitchCon, which I'm okay with. It was before StitchCon even started. Okay. That's that. I'm going to show you what I brought to work on and talk a little bit about what I actually managed to do. When I went to Stitch Nanigans in Arizona, I brought like six projects, I think, and I stitched on all of them. One I barely stitched on, but I'm counting it. Or maybe I, maybe I don't count it, but it doesn't matter. I stitched on five or six of the six that I brought. And so I had a really hard time narrowing down what I wanted to take to StitchCon because I wanted to stitch on everything. I ended up taking seven projects. I finished one, and then one was my like friendship piece, so it was handed off to somebody else to initial. Um, but it ended up being a really good number. I could have done with one less, but I worked on all of them, and I was really glad to have all of them with me. Um, there were a couple points, there were two projects I brought that I, were close to finishing and I brought them for that reason and I did not want to work on them at all and then finally last day I was like okay I want to be able to ring that finish bell and cheer and take my picture looking stupid excited and get my get my Mardi Gras beads from Shauna and Jana which I don't even know where those are um my finishing beads so I finished it <clears throat> I'll show you anyway I brought a lot and I was glad that I did so I brought two of my recent works by ABC, New Starts. Oh, I wonder which way is the top. I think it's this way. Um, this is Not Your Needle in Cross Stitch by Works by ABC, Arlene. And of course I brought this because I wanted to show her how fabulous it is looking on this fabric. I don't know what this fabric is. It's a mystery from eBay. Um, but I love it because it looks like an old manuscript, or as Michelle calls it, a paper bag in a good way. Uh, and I'm stitching it in guest cinders, which is perfect. Ah! And then at StitchCon, I got to see in the trunk show the model of both this piece, the cross stitch piece, and the black work piece. And now I'm like, oh, I do like the black work piece. So we'll see what happens. But I really, I really love having monochrome projects always, but especially uh, if they're handy for travel. Um, but I am stitching this two over one on like a 28 count, so it's pretty little um, and does not make for the greatest monochrome stitching travel project. But it was a lot of fun to work on, and it was very fun to show Arlene, because, I mean, Arlene's super nice, so I'm sure she would be nice and supportive no matter what, but I like to think she was extra excited about this. I brought another Works by ABC design because I needed her designing eye to tell me not to use Bloche, which I already knew, but I just wanted her to confirm it before I restarted. Um, so I talked about this in my last video. I started another Works by ABC pattern. This one is also a new release. Yeah, 2019. Um, woven Geometry in Black Work. And I had been wanting to try some black work, and I thought, who better than my dearest Arlene? And at Needle in a Haystack, I picked up one of my favorite colors of DMC, 318, and I picked it up in half bloche, which is like thicker, and it's kind of the equivalent of two strands of DMC, similar to the sulky threads that people are loving. Um, and I asked the shop owner and she was like, oh yeah, you could totally use this for black work. And I told her I was going to do it on 25 count. Um, and she was like, oh yeah, that, that should work. And it is too, it's too thick for the fabric I'm using it on because you end up losing some of the details. 
which I suspected. Um, let's see. Yeah. So I started it and I started with the X's around the, around the edges and I was like, oh, this looks perfect. And of course that was not the true test. So then I started on the like border parts of it, as you can see, and it's just really thick and it loses some of the detail. So as soon as I started one of the borders, I was kind of like, Mer, that's going to have to come out. I'm stitching this on 25 count and the way it's charted is that every square in the design is one square of linen. So, um, it's like 25 count over, you know, over one, two, I don't know. Don't listen to me. Um, it doesn't matter. It's going to be a little bit bigger than if I was stitching it on uh, 28 count or something else, obviously. So luckily this is a gigantic piece of fabric. It's like a magic trick. So I restarted it just on the other end. I showed it to Arlene and I was like, this is too thick, right? And she said, yeah, it really is. Um, but I had brought DMC 318 and so I restarted it. And I agree, it looks way better. Um, I really feel like in the video just there, they look about the same, but in real life, you can really see, um, oh no, you can see it. Hold on, sorry, Ned. So I need to find another project for my Floche, but I am super loving Black Work Life. Floche, DMC. But I was happy I didn't have to really rip it out. I just kept it and maybe I'll, I just thought maybe I would go back and like finish this, like fill it out a little bit more and then just turn it into like a scissor bob or something. Not totally waste the stitches and to get some practice with the flush. Um, so I brought that one and I worked on it a little bit. I just pulled it out that one night and showed Arlene and restarted and then I didn't really touch it again because the black was kind of hard to do um, in the crazy lighting. And it's also an unwieldy piece of fabric. Okay. Da, 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 da. I had a finish. I received this lovely chart from Michelle Cozier. This is the first in the Nocturne collection and I am ready to stitch the rest, Michelle. Uh, this is La Luna. Oh, look how pretty. So I am, I stitched this on 40 count vintage charcoal by Lakeside Linens, which is not the called for, but it is close. And I actually didn't use any of the called for threads, but they're all really close to the called for threads, I think. Um, so the, the wings of the moth, I switched from shutter green to gas storm clouds because it's my favorite and I will take any reason like this. Like that, all that green, that's all one color. That's all storm clouds. Gorgeous. Um, and then I think maybe actually the light brown that you see there is tiger's eye, which is called for, um, the darker brown. I think I subbed out a different brown. The red around the edges it was called for was red rocks. And this is a coloring cotton red. It's a little pink, but I don't want to rip it out. Um, and then for the moon, I used my standard inkwell for the dark side of the moon, color and cotton. And then I picked up a gray silk. I don't remember where it is or what it is, but I picked up a gray silk for the moon. And there, there it is. And I love that it's kind of like in the, in the model where you can see the moon in real life. Um, you can see the dark the dark of the moon across against the charcoal, but it kind of blends in. Oh, I love it. So I have to decide how I want to finish that. Uh, and then I'm ready to stitch all future cozy egg designs. So I didn't, I didn't touch it. I had it, I had all the moons outlined, so they just needed to be filled in. And then I had a little bit of the moth left to fill in and I didn't touch it until Sunday afternoon. So little one, I listened, I finished it. She was giving me a little pep talk before they left and was like, you just have to fill it in. You can, you can get it. And I was like, yes, I can. And I did. 
And then I was like, oh, I really should have finished that when everyone was here to admire it. But that's okay. Okay. Um, another, so that is, what is that? That's three so far. I brought my emblem of friendship, but mine um, is in the groups now, so people can put their initials in. And I swapped it out for Mitchie's, and I she had just stitched the emblem of friendship part. Maybe a little bit of the vine, I don't remember, but I stitched all of that of the vine for her. Um, I realized I didn't have a great project to take on the plane, and this was kind of perfect to take on the plane, and so since she did all the work of getting the fabric and floss for us, I generously offered to stitch her emblem um, so that at New Jersey we can all put initials in it. Um, and Michelle, I might be holding your bag hostage until next stitch party. Okay, so that was four, my emblem. Number five, I almost have finished, and this is the other one that if I had worked on it any sooner, I probably, or I mean, if I worked on it a little bit more, could have finished it and didn't. <laughs> He's so cute. This is Iced Tea by Moonlight Stitching. I got this chart as a gift from my roommate Laura last year, who I think, Laura, is your video up? I think she she's going to finally make us last year. Um, I love this little snowman. I, before StitchCon, I had finished the snowman part, minus his nose, and then I had like started outlining the cup and done some snowflakes. So this was my plain project, and... Um, all I had to do on the plane was fill in the cup, uh, which took a, a long time. And then I ended up stitching a lot of this um, on the plane before StitchCon, a tiny bit at StitchCon. And then this is a project I worked on a lot when I was visiting my family last week. I don't know what this fabric is. It's, I'm guessing, picture this bus crystal something. Uh, I got it on Sash and Load, but it's perfect for this. Ooh, and I am not stitching it in the called for colors, but as per usual, I don't know what it is. This is a Victorian motto purple, midnight blue, midnight purple, midnight, midnight something. And I was excited because midnight stitching. So all I have to do left on him, he's got a little tea tag, tea bag tag coming out of the cup that says iced tea. <laughs> uh, and then I just need to add his arms and then he's done. I used this by the way for School of Magical Stitches homework, I think, yes, homework, uh, included a hundred stitches on a grave or a graveyard scene. And I said that since he's a snowman in a cup of hot tea, he's standing in his own grave. So it got real morbid real fast, but look how cute he is. It doesn't matter. <sighs> so that will be done next time we chat, I hope. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I picked this up at the trunk show because it was so cute and Michelle and I were looking and looking and looking and looking through a basket of these uh, hands-on design collaboration patterns and we couldn't find it, couldn't find it, couldn't find it and finally Stephanie, Lindy Stitches, was like, oh, let me help and then she picks it up two seconds later. Um, but Michelle and I both just fell in love with it and so we didn't kit it up fully um, but we did get... I don't know what I did with it. We did get a silk yellow thread that is perfect. And then it calls for tiger's eye, which I have. And then the gray and the black, I think we decided we would just make do with what we have. So I need to find some fabric and find what I did with my yellow floss. Okay, that was five out of seven. I brought, but barely stitched on, and of course grew, which is true for stitch shenanigans. I barely touched this one. Um, <clears throat> but I was really happy to get to show it off to, uh, other people who are stitching or have stitched it and, um, just sharing it in general was very fun. Um, and so I'm not going to take it out of the q snap, sorry, but before StitchCon, I had stitched just one of these little diamonds on this particular tree. So I stitched some more and then I put it away.
Um, this is not the most travel friendly project because it's 10 million colors, but I like picking out like a big motif like that and then just pulling the colors. This is a lot of colors, but sometimes I just pull out like the five or six colors that a motif needs and then it makes it more transportable. Um, but I just didn't really work on it. I got this Deathly Hallows needle minder from Candy, Candy Stitches. I also got this Slytherin one from her because she said I could have two and I love her. I got this little Mary Poppins one. I don't remember who I got this from. And I got this little cookie one from Melissa Cupcake Stitcher. From the, like a couple tables away I said, is that a cookie? And I like stopped whoever, with whoever I was talking to and I went over and said, can I have it? And she said, and she gave me a cupcake. I love her. Uh, and then this one is uh, my own that I bought from Delicious Jen. Tiny Thief for Night, Tiny Forest, plus extras. Um, so that one I barely stitched on, but was glad I had brought. And then last but not least, I had a stitch curl new start with Jen Delicious Threads because last year we both stitched on Lunation and this year we decided we were both going to stitch on our whales. And I did start this before StitchCon um, just because I wanted to make sure I liked it on the fabric that I had chosen because I changed it and just to, you know, have it started and not mess up. Um, this is the Owl Forest Whale Kit that I got from 1884. No, there is no waiting list. They are out of stock. There are more on the way. Follow her Instagram and Facebook if you are interested. Do not message her asking if you can buy one because you can't unless you are following the directions and just be ready for it. Uh, I switched mine to Truffle by Picturelist Plus, which I just love. It's this wonderful neutral pink. It's showing up really pink here. A lot of times it photographs as like beige. It is really pink in real life. I love it so much. So before Stitch Con, I had just done this one sun. So I did all of this at Stitch Con. This fabulous grind guard was given to me by Olivia B. Uh, this is the needle minder that this pattern comes with. This is a needle minder from my shop, Top Knot Stitcher Shop on Etsy. And this little Corella Deville I had to get because I had my bare skin, so I was calling it my Corella coat. Um, this is from Kathleen Geek Floss, and I love it. Love it. So um, Jen started her whale in the middle, and I think overall she put more stitches into it at StitchCon than I did, but that's okay. I had fun doing other things, um, and I, I will catch up. I do think... One, one thing that slowed me down is that I think I'm going to change the gray that it comes with. I don't know how easily you can tell. It's a really dark gray and black variegated. And I think on the pink, I just don't love it. So I think I'm going to pick out a dark blue to use instead because it's like the outline for the whale. I think it's mostly just the whale. So stay tuned and see what happens there. Who knows? Um, let's see, let's see. Oh, one other thing I got at the trunk show was Color and Cotton Nightlands. Look at that purple and orange gorgeousness. And guess what? I got one for you too. So that's going in the giveaway. Um, I got this cute little thread holder from Carrie. House of Floss and Fluff. Look how cute it is. Thank you. Oh, this is the gorgeous yellow silk we picked out for our little sunflower piece. Gold Coast, the silken colors, and then Seagull. And that's it. That's StitchCon, more or less. There are other things, I'm sure. Um, all in all, it was a wonderful, amazing experience. I have been talking for a really long time, and I'm really hungry, so we are going to pause for lunch, 
and then we're going to come back and we're going to do part two, uh, which is, I could just show you right now. I'm just going to show you right now. We're already in this. Every week, every time I film, every month, whatever, I think I'm going to make a shorter video. I'm going to ramble less and um, I can't do it. So here we are. Um, before StitchCon, I ordered several things on Stash and Load that did not arrive before I left, so I got to come home to them, and it was very exciting. I will now share them with you. It's, you know, one of those things where I definitely forgot a lot of these, and then was just delighted to have come home to them. Um, so first up, I got this tiny little Mill Hill kit. Look at the little mouse, and he's using a leaf as an umbrella. It's called Rainy Weather. I love it. It comes with all the stuff. Oh, it's so cute. I cannot even. I saw it, and I just I had, I had to. Um, I got a couple things of fabric, some mushroom Lugana, and some dark rust Lugana. Um... I've been keeping my eyes out for this little Blackbird piece for a long time and was super pumped to finally nab one. So that's Spell of the Moon. You know me, love the moon. Ooh, this might be this might be a, a Smalls exchange that I stitch for an upcoming repeat. Um, and then I also, the same seller had some other little Blackbird cuties, so I got Mill House Without a Mouse cute, and Thistle Manor, and I also found a long dog that I, I'm sure I've seen it before, but it just really spoke to me. This is a thistle, and it says, stir into flame the gift which is you, and I just thought, that's beautiful, and I would like to do that. And I don't know when I'm going to start this or what colors I'm going to use, but I'm really glad I have it. I also probably won't touch it until I get at least further in Life After Death because it doesn't look all that crazy elaborate and big, but it's still 225 by 254. So it's, it's not the biggest thing ever, but it's not little. Um, and then I got this. Uh, primitive hair, Ding Dong Merrily on High, which I just, I don't know, I just love it. It's a great song, and it's a great look. Um, I really like the window, the curtains, I think that's super cool. And what a perfect opportunity to tell you that I signed up to go to the Primitive Hair Retreat in Asheville, North Carolina at Sassy Jacks in November, because, er, October. It's like the weekend before Halloween um, because Ryan talked me into it. So it wasn't hard to talk me into it, but I figured if this is the year of all the retreats, I want to go to all the retreats. And I love uh, Isabel, primitive hair. I'm all in. Isabella? Isabella. Um, so... I think that retreat includes a small exchange if you want to, and this is probably what I will do. Maybe. So that was exciting. Um, I'm going to save this one for last. I, last month, acquired an 11 by 17 Q-Snap on Stash and Load, and I've been working on my Hogwarts Castle giant piece that I haven't touched in like a year and a half. I've been slowly working on it again. Ta-da! See the castle! Um, Magical Stitches Homework, Mad for Minders, Slytherin Needle Minder, New Grime Guard, because I got this after I had told Olivia that I only stitch on 8x8 and 8x11 Q-snaps, um, but I found this lovely seller on Etsy, DLK's Crafts, I'll link it below if I remember, um, and I was looking for an 11 by 17. She had great prices. Uh, shipped from Canada. Shipped super quickly. It's cute and sewing themed. And it's really nice. So highly recommend if you need some Q-snaps. Q-snap covers. Grand cards. Whatever. Um, so I've been keeping my castle in that. I need to find like a bag of some sort for that to stay safe. 
Um, and then I also started using this little zippered pouch for that part project. It opens up, it's got a pocket on this side for your chart and then a pocket on this side for all your floss. And then when it's not in the key snug, I have my project folded up in here. And I really like it. Um, keeps it. Keeps it nice and tidy for such a massive project. Um, those are not yet available in my shop, but maybe I'll, if I can source them, maybe I'll add them in. Okay. The PS Davis is still in stock, let's say that. I saw this on Stash Unload and lost my mind. I already posted this on Instagram. Um, it's this wonderful little Santa chart that I've seen Stephanie Lindy Stitches working on and have loved. Santa with a bunny and a basket of vegetables. I love him. Woodland Santa. He's just so happy and calm and it's just beautiful. So I like to think of this as like Santa in like February when his work is done and he's just hanging out in the forest and he's got his vegetables already ready and maybe it could be, I don't know. It's very wintry, it's very Christmassy, but I don't think he'd be that stress-free in December. He's got that cute little bunny. And so uh, this was on Stash Alone and so I saw it and was like, oh, yeah, but guess what? It also came pre-stitched or started. Um, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. So I got all the threads and then a partially stitched project. And sorry, I just got distracted because it looks like maybe it's stitched one over two. It is, I think. Oh, that's got two strands. His beard looks like it's maybe stitched one over two. Maybe it's called for that way. I don't know. But it's gorgeous, and I love it. I'm super excited to work on that. And Stephanie, um, game on. Let's see who can finish theirs first. Super pumped. Okay, that is all of my haul to share. I think it is. Yep, everything around me is very messy, so it seems like we should be about done, and I think, I think that's true. Oh, uh, if you're still here, let's chat. Um, I started something new this morning for the Diana, Kis Diana It Is Kismet, Kismas in July stitch along for her birthday, which is in December, but we're celebrating it now because she deserves all the celebrations. Um, and this is a little chart that I got in the Gift of Stitching magazine, which I bought PDFs of last year and I'm trying to actually stitch from now. Um, it's this cute little partridge in a pear tree ornament. And look at it, it's so cute, it's so tiny. So I started that today. I'm using my princess hoop that Diana gave me. It's all good. I'm using random floss that I have left over from something. I like this whole random stitching life. I've really been loving it. Um, so there's that. I showed you Harry Potter. I feel like I had something else really exciting to share with you all, but it's too messy to remember. Oh, I can share a couple shop updates. I have a few new items in stock. Or back in stock. Um, crinkle, 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 crinkle. New items including this cute little unicorn. Boop, 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 boop. And restock items like these. Cute little matryoshkas. Boop, 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 boop. I don't know what that sound effect is. And what else? This is really cute. The little trash pandas. Oh, so cute. 
little raccoons and he's got a little acorn. And they're in a bunch of different colors. Oh, the cutest. Um, so those are all up in my shop. Uh, along with several others, there's a lot more new, there are, there are a lot more new items on their way. So keep an eye out. If you haven't already, please follow my shop because I would love to share. The things that make me really happy are the things that I stock in my shop. So I love, I love everything that's in there and I'm delighted to share it with you. I also think I'm going to be de-stashing some of my fabric. So if you're interested in fabric, like quilting, not stitching, sewing and quilting fabric in a range of quality, um, from like cheap Joanne stuff to like nice quilting stuff, um, I will be probably listing some of that in the near future in some way. Um, I do have quilting goals, but I'm trying to abandon my project bag goals, and I bought a lot of fabric kind of with more project bags in mind, and then I realized I don't enjoy sewing them, and other people are more talented, and I'm just not going to worry about it. So, that's that. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. No books to share right now. I'm just trying to look at the mess around me and see what I forgot. <clears throat> but no, that looks pretty good. I think we did good. So with that, I'm going to stop and um, start uploading this and start captioning it. I know I'm behind on my captions and uh, I feel newly dedicated to that because I got to meet Corey, the silent stitcher, and they are the inspiration for my captions. But I also have not followed through on my commitment <laughs> to captioning everything. Um, so I'm going to do that. Corey, it was so nice to meet you. Oh, and let's just throw it in now because, I don't know, just because, um, I do have a little giveaway going on here. I've got a bag of goodies. I'm going to be adding all kinds of things to this. I think I'm going to leave this giveaway open until the end of, well, I don't want this sitting around forever. I'm going to leave this giveaway open. until, oh, but I want to do it before New Jersey. I'm going to leave this giveaway open until the end of August. I know. Um, because that way I can add lots more things to it. I can talk about it a little bit more, not succinctly, because I don't do things succinctly. Um, but I can share a little bit more about it and share it in multiple ways. It's a little StitchCon slash stitching appreciation basket bag of love um and i'm gonna add lots of goodies to it and i haven't done a giveaway in a long time and i'm gonna make this a great one kind of kind of great if it's just gonna be a bag of things i love um but if you are interested in getting in on the action um leave me a comment with the earlier agreed upon prompt so if you're coming in at the end you've got to find out where that is I don't know. I always do my giveaways too, like, spastically. But that's okay. It'll do, it'll do. Um, let me make sure. Yeah. We are all good. Okay. I will let you go. Thanks for hanging out with me. Please let me know what you're working on. What are you stitching to? What are you up to today? All the things. Just say hi. And I'll see you next time.